Hi, welcome to Ping. I'm Pete Samuels. I'm the Director of Marketing. This is the uh, worldwide headquarters for Ping Golf Equipment. This is where all the Ping clubs are designed, all the engineering takes place, all the research and development. It also is the location where all the clubs are assembled, uh, custom built, and uh, shipped out around the world to uh, help golfers uh, lower their scores and enjoy the game more. This is what we call the kidding area. So every set of clubs we build has what we call a work order. So in this particular click case, this is a set of G30 irons. And the set makeup is four through nine, pitching wedge, U wedge. And then here are all the specs that that club will get calibrated to once it gets into the system. Then they'll go to these boxes and pull the appropriate heads based on that work order. But once they do that, they put them on these foam trays, and then they start the process. From here on out, this set of irons stays together, never gets separated. So again, this is a specific order built to a specific spec that now stays together throughout. One of the first things they do is they obviously they take them out of those bags, put them on the tray, but then they're gonna paint the color code which is what we refer to, what's the lying of the club, how it rests on the ground. Mm -hmm. Again, different people based on their height, based on their swing plane, they require a different lying, meaning when, the, when that club hits the turf, we want it to go through square. We don't want the toe to hit first, we don't want the heel to hit first. So once someone gets custom fit, right. during that fitting, they're gonna say, you're a blue color code, which refers to the lying one. Okay. So when she gets a set that says, well, this happens to be a black color code, they're gonna paint that, the dot on the club. These have already been done. So see how that dot is black? Mm -hmm. So that means it's a black color code. So once they get this on this particular card, Obviously, you can't build a set of clubs without shafts, so this work order tells them what shafts go with that particular set. So here again, here's another set of G30s, and in this case, the, the shaft is the TFC 419, which is a graphite shaft. So you'll notice this says 10 right here, right? So this foam tray gets put on rack 10, and then if you look over here, you can see the little um, pouch that says 10 on it. So when it gets into the cell, they're gonna pull tray 10, and they're gonna pull the shafts from pouch 10, because that's what's gonna get built. So they get epoxied here. So he's gonna put epoxy, actually he's putting a little weight in there now but eventually he'll put epoxy into the hosel and then he'll put epoxy on the tip of the shaft and when it comes time to join the two, you'll see that. So there's a, if you look in there, oh, there's yeah. a camera. Thank you. Very cool. And what that camera does, it's reading the, the scoring lines or the groove or the angle of those and the computer now knows because of that work order, because we're scanning it throughout the process, it knows what the lie angle and the loft angle of that club is supposed to be. So, and hold it there. So you see up there it says the lie needs to be a quarter degree more upright in the loft, a degree and three quarters weaker. So knowing the operator that he is, he'll now take it out of that and make those adjustments. And it'll, it may take him a few, to give, you might need a little room there. So I gave that little bend, and that metal has been heat treated, which allows us to bend it without snapping. Mm. So he's always looking up there until he gets that. So the hammer adjusts the lie angle, so it's going either flatter or more upright. Every time you adjust that, you're going to influence the loft a little bit. Puts it back in the gauge, that camera's reading it. So it told him the lie angle's good, but he's still got a little bit more weak in the loft by a half degree. And then he's going to lubricate the tape and the grip so it slides on. And 
then you can see that red laser. That's his alignment guy. Oh, yeah. And there's there's lines on the grip that allow him to make sure it's on there square. Shipping daily, and because of the custom nature, those work orders. Yeah. You know that. We, hopefully every morning we come in and there's lots of those because we're not building up months of images. This is all real time shipping. Most of these clubs are already sold. Somebody's just waiting to pick them up. So uh, these cameras are set up so you can see it on the screen there. Set up to track these markers, um, these reflective markers. So each of those cameras shoots out infrared light reflects off of these markers and then they have special filters on the cameras that allow uh, us to determine the positions of each of these markers in 3D space. What's pretty cool about that is once we know the positions of all those markers in 3D space throughout time, uh, we can determine how the club's accelerating, how it's bending, um, all the different orientations that um, it experiences during the golf swing. And then I'm just going to simulate some swings, but right here is where a player would take this device and actually take three swings. Um, and you can see that it visualizes um, the player's swing. Mm -hmm. Gives us a, um, wow. a club head speed. I look at the transitions, what happens kind of as the, at the beginning of the downswing, um, and then where their hands are at impact. So these are three kind of parameters that help us make a recommendation. Mm -hmm. You see, it's it's making a recommendation. Uh, it gives a shaft recommendation, um, a model recommendation. Uh, this is the fifth generation ping man. That's what the five mean, M5. Uh, but this was first developed by Karsten Solheim back in the 70s. Uh, as Eric said, he was all about science and research. And at the time, and there actually it still exists. If you ever heard of Iron Byron, which is a testing mm -hmm. robot, Karsten didn't feel that that technology accurately sort of simulated a human swing. It was very rigid in its takeaway and there was no free moving wrist. So he built his own robot and named it Pingman. And so it has all the characteristics of a golf, so a moving wrist, a shoulder turn, um, and there's a lot more to it. But basically, as Eric was saying, again, this is critical to our testing as well because of the repeatability of it and the, the ability to you know, consistently hit the hit the ball off the toe or the high toe, the low, you know, wherever we want to hit it to measure, you know, the moment of inertia or the performance, we can simulate that in here. All right. All right. You want to do this? Sorry, I walked right in front of your shot. Okay. <laughs> wow. So just over 2,800 putters in here. Um, all different models and every time a player wins and we build the two we build them to the exact spec that they use so if it was two inches shorter than standard we build it to that if the loft was more or less than standard we build it to that so that was in 94 <laughs> 